What's up? I'm Santiago. I'm Caden. And welcome to Critter Chasing Kids. Today we're going after a large species of toad, known as the Sonoran Desert Toad or Colorado River Toad. Well, we're also looking for that. I'm going to be looking for a rattlesnake. Not today. But what do you? But there's still a chance. What do you say? Should we get going? Yeah. Now, to maximize your chances of finding the Sonoran Desert Toad, we have to go in dark pathways. We also need to find, find we also need to stay near water, so, because even though we're in the desert, they're still amphibians, so they, they need water. They need the humidity. Yeah. And what do you think? Should we get going? Yeah. We spoke in whispers as to not scare off any toads. Then, as we were walking for a long time, we came across a clearing where it was dark and very humid. As we were walking, we heard a loud rustling in the bushes. So when we shined our flashlights on that area, we found the largest toad we may ever see. I lured the toad into an open area with my net. That made it an easy catch. I patiently stood by, waiting for him to get the toad out into the clearing so that when he captured it, I was there to help get it out of the net. that we don't want to get him. He's calm. I want to get him. Quick, you want to get him? Any chance? Where'd he go? So we got a large specimen of the Sonoran Desert Toad. And right here, right here behind the eyes, there are sausage-like glands, which when squeezed by a predator really hard, release a toxin or poison that oozes white. And now, it's slimy because of mucus. The mucus on it isn't, most people think it's slime, but the mucus is actually a defense mechanism. It can change your skin if it goes inside your pores. This thing is pretty cool. Now these things eat a lot. They eat a lot of different varieties of animals, though, they are carnivorous, which means that they eat meat. And they will eat small mammals, small lizards, and, and sometimes other amphibians. Yeah. So these things are pretty aggressive. And But when you catch one of these creatures, you want to release them exactly where you caught them. Yeah. And we know exactly where we caught them. These were right next yeah. to it. So. Oh, oh, he's breathing. Oh, they hiss, they hiss. They hiss. He's hissing. Okay, so, so nope. I'm gonna catch him. You, you, because you don't want the species to get intertwined. So you ho you can hold a frog like a toad and a frog like this because they won't lose their legs. But then it kind of immobilizes them. It's like a leash on a dog. And we're gonna release this guy because the subspecies of different animals can mix causing terrible, terrible catastrophes in the species. So we're gonna release him back over here where we found him. Right there, and there he goes. Hit it, he's hiding behind a bush. Now, we gotta take off the gloves You carefully. gotta use these rubber gloves because we'll, uh, different materials of gloves can be seeped through by the mucus easily. And once you use the gloves, you want to Take them off without touching any wet parts. Okay. So at, at this time of night, and you're using flashlights, of course, so you want to bring repellent because, as you can see, bugs are attracted to the light. And then, since there's mosquitoes, they can 
just fight you. And that's really annoying. So yeah, I need to bring that. Oh, we must have caught like the the Sonora Desert Toad King. Yeah, it was like, huge. It was both my hands bigger. But, yeah, that guy was huge. He must have been leading them all. But yeah. let's see, we learned that they, their mucus. Yeah, uh, about their mucus. It, uh, their, how to keep, how to be safe with them. Yeah, we also learned about what they eat, their habitat, and that you always need to put them back where you found. Yeah, that's the, probably the most important rule of all. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Catch us again on our next adventure. We'll see you on episode two of Critter Chasing Kids.